So guys, welcome. Welcome on Twitch, everyone. My name is Purple Disco Machine. And first of all, thanks to Defected for setting this live stream up. And of course, for giving me the opportunity to remix the amazing song uh, from Boys Noise, All I Want. And so, which was an, an, an honor to do another remix for you guys, Defected. So thanks, um, yeah, for this. Um, yes, so um, when I start working on a remix, the approach is a bit different to, uh, to, um, to original songs. So as you know, um, I really love remixing songs. So since I started making music years ago, um, I remix songs from, from other people because it was a different impact and I really loved it to work on on uh, ideas from from other people and um, it was really uh, was inspiring me and and my music of course um, to listen to to stems from from other projects to see okay how they did this how they created baselines and everything and even for my working process it was really gainful to to remix songs um, from from yeah from certain people um, here on this one, um, this was actually a no-brainer. As I got the remix request from Simon, and as he sent me the the original song, I instantly loved it. This kind of '90s Chicago house vibe, paired with uh, with Jake's voice, um, was so unbelievably good. And and what I really liked on this remix was that um, he he didn't use many different elements so it was pretty simple pretty clear and focused on on a few simple elements like the voice from jake and um the bass line and of course the 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 drums and for me it was uh was um, the question what kind of uh, elements i wanted to have in my songs and i instantly came up with the idea to to try to recreate the vibe and the and the um the sound of the original and make it more funky more uh yeah more groovy and to to uh yeah move this into a purple disco machine song that's why i used of course the bass line i used uh, of course jake's voice a few a few fx a few uh arps you can just hear in the background, which um, we want to go through later on. And um, yeah, I, and I created a totally different um, groove. I added a bit more funky guitars, a bit more clavier synths and stuff, typical PDMs, uh, PBM, PDM um, yeah, elements to create uh, this, this um, yeah, Purple Disco Machine sound. Yeah, so, um, yeah, again, what an amazing, what an amazing original. So, uh, yeah, shout out to, to Alex for this amazing song. And so, yeah, let's dive into the stems. And um, first of all, as you can see, um, I really like uh, working with different colors for for different groups here, just to to uh, to get an overview. And usually, I mean, for this pro a project, I have thirty nine, almost forty stems. But usually, when I when I work on on my own songs and original songs, especially on the last album for those more uh, yeah pop song or popish songs with a with a, a decent song structure i my projects are more like 60 70 stems and to have an overview i usually don't like to work with with many groups i just like or i used to work since many many years with colors and that's why i still love to give my groups colors so that's that means as you can see here for example um, all the drums are green, bass lines are yellow, all the different instruments are usually blue, then guitars purple, 
because that's my favorite part of the of the song and wax got another color and f effects so it's it's kind of like i create my groups uh, through the colors so and it's it's much easier so for me i'm i'm um, i'm quite lazy sometimes so for me the 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 most important thing is being quick in in, in producing so that's why um i still or well, since 15 years i work with cubase because it's the first daw um i experienced years ago and i'm still in love with this so because i i created all the shortcuts i need um to 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 speed up my my um creativity and production process so that's why i try to be quick as possible um one reason to do this is i get pretty quickly tired of my own songs so my own songs bore me um um after two or three days so I, I i could never work on a 60 uh, bar loop for three four days in a row i was just get so tired of listening that again and again so um that's why um yeah i created all those shortcuts and and the colors when i start working on a song what i also did here uh, on this song i usually start with the drums that's why the drums are always um, the first five, six stems on my projects. For me, the drums is the most important thing because I need the, the groove to get the vibe and, and to get the flow. So I start with the drums and then the bass line and drums and bass line together gives me, um, gives me the groove I need to, to, to feel the song, to feel the vibe, to start jamming, to start thinking about what else i wanted to even when i arrange i need the groove um i can chop and 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 yeah then copy paste and and stuff like this so that's why the first stems here in green are my drums so let's go through the drums what we have okay let's start with the kick pretty simple kick Yeah. Then a sub kick. That's a sub kick I use in almost every song of mine since since many many years. It's more kind of a compression and yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a compression thing. Um, if I want this bass line with a really really um, suppy suppy and wobbly bass or more chopped and more like a this more like a stompy kick so but at the end i always um go with this one and um another reason um is because um like like i mentioned before i'm i'm lazy and i i created over the last years um i recorded and created and collected so many so many percussions and snares and kicks i chopped it from all disco records and so i have a big collection of snares kicks hi-hats percussions and I, I, I play most of the percussions here in my studio cowbells and i had um showell also a guy from defected so shout out to showell um who who um, recorded a bunch of percussion for my first album, Somatic, um, 2017. So I have um, those folders full of different vibes, percussions, uh, rimbles, um, shakers, everything. And like I, like I said, I record also a lot of shakers here in my studio and, and, and um, cowbells as well. So I think cowbell is, kind of like the um, kind of a signature sound for my song so I'm trying to use cowbells because I love cowbells I love this organic um, percussion vibe um, in my song so that's why um, I trying to use uh, the cowbells on almost every song it, it, it became like a signature sound here and um, of course here in, in this remix so 
then I have a few layers of um, drum loops. Drum loops I, I created over the last years. Drum loops I sampled from 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 disco classics, from funk songs, from yeah. This one. This one. Yeah, and this one I just let me play it. Try tries like this, and then I added one of my favorite uh, plugins. It's the Shaper Box. It's it's a bit like a <coughs> um, a side chainer, um, but way um, yeah. But it's 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 so easy to use this one because you just have to to add this to the stem, and then it works like a side chain. So like this pumpy um, puppy effect you you want to have or you you have mostly in this kind of French house and disco house songs when the kick comes that everything uh, gets side chained and it's just it's actually the same effect here um, again this is this is try and then with the effect here I just wanted to have this reverb, this really pumpy uh, clap reverb, um, which works perfect together with the snare. And the head, I guess no effects on the head, yeah. What else we have? On the kick. We have just this filter on the snare. I think I use yeah. It's it's a high pass just to just to kill the lows because we like like I say we have this sub kick here and otherwise it would become too too muddy if I don't cut the lows here on the snare. So and and I really like if it's if the drums are clear and and um not too too much so now Okay, let's uh, move on with the bass line. The bass line was uh, one of the key elements in the original song and I absolutely love the sound of the bass line. That's why I um, I try to keep the vibe and keep the, the sound and I used the same bass line, I just dropped it and as you can see here <clears throat> so the original bass line sounds like this perfect and I chopped it and now it sounds like this
problem, the only problem, the sound was amazing. The only problem I had here with the bass line is I missed the sub bass. That's why <coughs> I added sub bass, which plays actually the same notes. It's this one here. And I use, what synth I use? I think it's a sub boom bass. Yeah, it's this one, sub boom bass. So like I, like I said, the same, the same notes just to support the, the bass line and the bounce to the other side. And you have this wobbly sub bass we need. So that's why uh, another uh, important thing for me is to find the right balance of kick and bass line. I think it's for every for every producer for, elec uh, for, for every producer on the electronic music is the hardest thing to find the balance between the kick and the bass that everything sounds balanced and it's not the kick is too stompy and you don't feel the bass or you just have the wobbly bass and, and, and no kick I mean we, we actually on the, on the club on the dance floors we need the kick to get the, the rhythm and, and the groove and the vibe so and, 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 and to find the balance of both is 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 for me is is one of the the most important things that's why i decided here to add um a sub bass um let me sh let me show what kind of effects i use okay uh on almost every bass line is it's a guitar bass a synth bass a moog or whatever i gonna use or i'm going to use uh, this one it's it's from waves it's uh, the CLA bundle and it for me it's a perfect tool for bass lines because it's one plug in which adds everything I want everything I need in the bass so I can compress I can add some compression This is a little effect I um, added here on this song. I think it's it's also from from Alex from the original song, and yeah, it's it's a bit like a an ARP effect. I want to have here. Same here on the Give it to me. Jake's voice. It's it's from the same waves bundle from CLA from uh yeah but it's um Give it to me. Time. Why I use the bass line? Give it to me. I know here. Give it to me. So it would be a CLA and vocal. So that's Give it to me. a plug in I use quite a lot. It's from the same CLA bundle and or from Waves. Give it to me. I use it for almost every vocals or every every song uh, where I have vocals. Give it to me. Yeah, basically when I when I get the tri stems, the first thing I add is is this one. Give it to me. Add compression, a bit mids, 
reverb, a, a small delay. Give it to me. And the chorus wide. But here, I haven't used it because, um, or I didn't use it because. Give it to me. Um, I used the I used this the the wet stems, so because they were perfect, they were on point, and there were there was nothing nothing to add. So that's why I. Uh, I was working with the with the wet stamps here. As you can hear, give it to me. It sounds good. He's having a really really short delay, which makes this kind of um, short room and gives this wide stereo effect. I absolutely like, and especially um, another thing I I I um, try to to men or I I want to mention when I start working on a song. Um, I, I sometimes I close my eyes and then I imagine I'm staying in a in a 3D room, and then I have to place all the all the uh, the single um, instruments and, and and drums in a room, so to uh, to avoid that everything just uh, just uh, yeah sounds like a really mono song, so which is quite muddy so I trying to to make the room as big as possible so and if, if you close your eyes and just listen to the voice you you can hear left and right such a big room and, and and there's so much space in the middle enough space for the bass line usually the drums are in the middle and mostly the bass lines and then I'm trying to place um, instruments like pianos or guitars on the left or on the right side just to 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 give every instrument their room or their, their place to, to shine element which comes in is this arp. Um, I think I made it with a um, Novation bus station 2 which is um, in my opinion one of the best um, yeah since external or, or uh, since um, hardware since I, I have and I use it quite I lose I use this one quite a lot so it's so easy to plug even if you just want to work with the presets you have so many um, so many different ways to create a, an, an amazing baseline and I'm also using uh, this um, best station for for um, for ups and that's what I what I did here then I added a few effects pass and another amazing plug-in it's the, the god phaser to get this typical funky french house house sound i think phaser is is also um is, is anyway one of my my favorite um fx to add in, in a song a phaser brings always this kind of uh, 80s um, or even this kind of French house vibe to a song. Okay, what else? Shaper box again. And Mondo Mode. Mondo Mode is a nice tool. Um, it's, it's, it, it's like the app works from right to left, from left to right, just to, um, yeah, to give this song more dynamic. And so I mean, it's
for my remix I wanted to um, give the song a bit more song structure that's why I added well, I created kind of a chorus uh, in this song with with uh, with different chords. Um, chords the original song um, um, don't have. So here on this particular chords, I used the I think it was a Jupiter eight. Yeah. So I I used the Jupiter eight for this one. And it's it's just you have uh, those chords to introduce the, the chorus. On the chords, the same like on the drums, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to work different layers um, to create an even bigger and brighter and, and, and wider sound. That's why I added to the Jupiter 8 a road. best chorus I think one of the best ever it's uh, it's an a, a, yeah it's like a remake from the from the Juno 106 and Juno 6 uh, chorus which I actually have on my synths but uh, of course I'm lazy I'm using the VST plugin and the sound is quite similar so it's 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 pretty good and yeah <laughs> gives this 70s late 70s disco vibe and adds a bit more um, dramatic a bit more uh, yeah a bit more dramatic to the sound <laughs> the bass line it's the same bass line it's the same loop like um, um, before but uh, I just added a filter
I mentioned before here, cowbell. I think it's a it's a sound I recorded over the last years. Yeah, and then I just uh, place it um, and chop this, chop it. Yeah, and then I was adding a delay. Yeah. Same DLA. Unplug this time, which adds a nice delay and reverb. Oh, it's nice. yeah, that's it. And then uh, here, the cowboy plays the same. Um, like or it, it, it's 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 actually the same like the bass line. The same group. So then we have this 80s brass. I think I made this one. I think also Jupiter 8. I just can't remember. Yes. Let's try. And again, this the same plug-in. This time a, a a really long reverb to to give um this element a bit more this eighties mid eighties vibe. That's right. we have uh, another important element here is the guitar um, in most of my songs I have guitars so back in the days I was I used quite a lot of uh, samples from from different sample packs but um, in the last years I found a really great guy called Chitan from Berlin and he was, or he recorded most of my guitar riffs over the last years. He played guitar on, um, on, on almost every song I released in the last two or three years. So, and I, um, because of him, I have now a big collection of, um, of guitar riffs, of uh, funky guitars, wah wah guitars, uh, muted guitars, everything, and guitar riffs and and um, samples I can use now uh, even in, in 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 remixes and that's what I did here and the good thing is we record um, all the riffs three four times in a row and then I double it and one goes to the left and one goes to the right and if you do this you have this amazing stereo effect because he, he never plays the same notes in exactly the same uh yeah time so it's it's always layering uh it's always layered so that's why that's why you have this amazing uh stereo effect that's right. Another element I used from the original song from from Alex is the steps. Here gives this kind of offbeat rhythm. is also an ARP um, from from the original song. Here I did something really cool. I added a flanger and once you adjust as uh, once you go up with a with a feedback maybe to 90 100 percent you have this really wonky and weird um, effect. I 
just love it which adds another um vibe and and and, and sound to the song <laughs> here in this part the guitar starts to shine so um, this is really important for me to, to have all the or every single instrument in a song should have his moment to shine should have this little um, yeah part in the song um, where I said okay this this is the guitar riff this is the bass line this is the the arp. That's why I'm trying to give every every key element in a song um, his moment here. In this particular um, song, I did it here. <laughs> DJ since so many years and when I when I work on songs I produce songs from a DJ perspective so songs I would play as a DJ and I'm also arranged songs from from a DJ perspective that's why I really like where you can calm down a bit let the guitar shine let the vocals shine the chords again and then which introduce um, the drop and time for, for drum rolls, risers and stuff like this. So I really like this, uh, this part, especially as a DJ, it's, it's the moment where I can uh, work with the crowd, work with the effects and it's everyone is, is just waiting for the hands up moment and, and um, yeah. So and here this build up sometimes um, this is exactly um, the moment when I need to, to road test my songs. If the is the build up too long, is it perfect, is the break too long, is the intro too long or that's a part uh, in my production process I, re I actually really need and really miss nowadays because I mean it's one thing to produce the songs here in the studio but I, I need to road test it. I need to see um, especially uh, from the arrangement perspective um, if a song is the song good or not so if the the build up is too long and for here i think it, it's working so i just trust trust my just my feelings section here snare that's act 
actually in the whole um, build up risers. I think there's one riser here. And another one. That's more a noise. As you can hear here, there's a new element which becomes this moment. It's this one. It's this up with a with a weird plane sound. is actually quite simple so it's just copy paste and I think we went through all the important stems let me just check if I forgot something so we had the kick delay percussion bass line dubs Um, on the master section, uh, I don't mix and master my songs by myself, so I have someone um, from Hamburg, so shout out to Monte, and um, he is mixing all my songs since since many years. I had uh, actually another guy uh, before called Sven, so um, those two guys were, uh, yeah, actually the guys behind my 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 sound and here on, on the uh, production process i usually on the master section i just add a little compressor <laughs> more or less compress just the the drums and the bass and everything just to get an idea how the sound um will be after after the 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 mixing process and the mastering of course <laughs> And the uh, Waves Ultra Maximizer, which makes it just a bit louder. And then another important tool for me is the, the Analyzer. Yeah, the analyzer is also an, an important tool for me just to to see I, I usually work with this one not sure you can see maybe I, I can show you it's it's this one it's the clock technique and analyzer uh, I use quite a lot. just to see uh, the frequencies of, of the single elements here for the bass line for example um, the bass line is around 200 or it's having his peak around 200 300 just to to avoid um to avoid peaks and 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 to work a bit more uh on the on the eq side of the song um that's why either i go with a with an analyzer here on the vst or with a with a uh, clock technique um there well i i think there's nothing else to add here on the production side. Yeah, I think that's it. So, um, yeah, now you guys were sending me a few questions. I actually already printed and I wanted to go through. So first of all, thanks for your interest. Thanks, uh, thanks for your question. We just uh, printed a few and so yeah, let me start. Um, what's the best way to get into music production from uh, I am Mr. Goo? Um, well, it's uh, as I started, I started 20 years ago. So I think 20 years ago it was a bit more complicated to, to uh, 
get into a music production because they had, you had just I think two or three different uh, DAWs and no actually no no proper sample packs nothing like this so you had to create your own sound from the from the scratch from the beginning that's why as I started making music I started uh, actually started with Fruity Loops which was uh, back in the days it was okay but after a while uh, I reached the limit and so I also was uh, I was also working with a uh, with a few analog synths, uh, the Korg Electribe series and stuff like this, drum computers, uh, then a few synths. I had a vocoder already, so I, I tried to uh, was this kind of try and error process over years and to 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 find my sound. But nowadays, um, I think it, it it's 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 much easier, especially with with Ableton, for example. I mean, I, I never worked on Ableton on, on the production side so I have no idea if it's good or not but I heard from from so many friends it's the perfect uh, the perfect uh, DAW to start making music because everything is track and drop you have so many uh, sample packs like Slice or um, Sample Magic where you can just um, find the right you just need the right key and then what kind of music you like it's techno or house or I don't know whatever and then you you just need to find the right instruments and the right samples and it's it's more like a puzzle and it, it, it makes things so much easier but um, on the other hand for me it, it was really um, really gainful to um, have all the years um, working on my machines just to to um, yeah to, just to understand how a synthesizer works with all the oscillators and filters and and frequencies and stuff like this so to, to understand how a synthesizer works you need to work on those so a, a, a VST plugin of course can can do more or less the same but you will end up using the presets more and more so that's what I realized especially because like I mentioned I'm, I'm lazy of course I start with I start with presets just to I have the sound in mind, but usually I start with presets, and and when I when I'm not sure with the sound, I I start adjusting the sound uh, using oscillators. Or, but um, yeah, I think Ableton would be the the uh, the DAW um for f I would use when I when I start uh, when I would start now um for sure yeah. So another question. How do you make your basses and guitars? Um, yeah, I mean, like I like I said, the bass line is is one of my key key em key elements in the song. So um, the focus on in from the first moment when I start working on a song, the tr the drums, the groove, of course, but then the bass line is the most important part. I think I spend the most time finding the right bass sound finding the right groove for the bass line and um i i got a lot of uh bass guitar um riffs also from chitan i use and i use a lot of vst plugins um i think a, a vst plugin i can recommend is from contact the the scarby bass it's a bass i I mostly use on my songs Scarby bass. For example, I use the Scarby bass on in my arms. I think on, yeah, on on, on many many other songs Scarby bass, um, the MM bass or the J bass, just just perfect. But also from Waves, uh, the I think it was it's called Finger bass or something like this. Then the Trillion, um, the Trillion is having a a lot of amazing. Uh, bass sound trillion is, is it works on the on the wavetable synthesis so you 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 work with real recorded bass notes you can just um just um yeah play by yourself which which gives you the exact real bass guitar sound even if you change notes or something like this and so yeah trillion amazing contact um scabby bass amazing or you if you're lucky and you can bass, uh, you can play bass, then um, 
yeah of course go with this um, on the guitar side it's the same sometimes i use uh, samples from sample pack but mostly uh, the, the guitar samples from from my friend and from my library um, yeah so next question what is your most important vst plugin um that's actually a good question so um i really like the Artoria bundle so i work a lot in in, in most of my songs with the Artoria bundle even here i i i think amazing plugins are the clavinet of course because i'm a big fan of the clavi sound and i don't have a honor clavi here so that's why i use this clavinet quite a lot from Artoria. amazing sound another great um, plug-in is the solina amazing sound it is plugged let me show you oh, that's not me use this solina That's, that's what I actually forgot. So here in the song, I actually have the Solina here. Yeah, it, here it is. It's such an amazing um, yeah, sequence. It sounds a bit like raindrops. And that's, yeah, what I, what I, what I said, this is this sound. Yeah. Once you play a chord, then it starts playing this really, really wonky and 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 nice. I mean, it's it's not wonky. It's it's really lovely and harmonic and um, yeah, uplifting sound. Okay, yeah, this. So the Atoria plugin, highly recommended from my side. Um, okay. Uh, do you layer bass lines? Usually, I, 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 I don't layer bass lines because if you try to layer bass lines, you get always this kind of muddy sound when you layer sub bass. And so you have to decide, especially because of the, the sub bass, you have to decide for, for one bass line. And um, I think it, it, it's also um, really important, or what I learned over the last years is, is if you have to EQ and an instrument too much, then it might be the wrong one. The perfect instrument for your song is the instrument you don't have to uh, EQ, you don't have to use many effects to get the sound. It just fits perfect in your in your uh, in the rest of your of your project or in your song. So. That's what I what I learned. And if you start EQing, um, also with the, on the bass line, if you start EQing the bass line and you you have to use so many effects to make it sound like, uh, you, yeah, to to, to 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 make it sound like perfect or that it matches to to the rest of the song, um, it may be the wrong one. So just find the right synth, find the right bass line, um, which per which fits perfect. Uh, to your song <coughs> that's what I the only thing I can say um, here so that's why I usually never lay a bass line here it's a different thing because I was missing the sub bass <coughs> and I wanted to keep the original vibe but um, <coughs> sorry it's a <coughs> try air here in my studio so yeah again how do you make music unique and yeah how do you make music unique um, yeah, it's usually I don't think too much about what kind of genre it is, what uh, what kind of music the radio plays right now, and um, I think the only way to be unique is just follow your heart, just make the the music the sound you like and and you feel inside. <coughs> That's what I what I what I usually do. Of course, my I'm my music is influenced by. By other guys, um, of course, um, um, are listening to to music from other people just to to 
um, to 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 get the the idea. Okay, I like, for example, when I listen to a disco song, I say, okay, I, I really like the clavi in this song. I want to have a clavi, not exactly the same clavi, but I just want to have this kind of vibe the clavi brings to this sound in my song as well. And then I'm trying to find um, either a clavi or a different sound just to, to get the same vibe. And, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm usually, even if I, if I start working on a totally different song it ends up as a purple disco machine song because i i like the same elements and i like uh, I, I, yeah i love to work with the same elements with the same instruments again and again so that's my signature sound and um that's what 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 uh what, what i want to produce that's what, what makes me happy and and i think w once i had this goosebump or dancing moment here in the studio hopefully everyone else will have the same moment or the same feeling on the dance floors as well so but if i don't have this moment here in the studio when i work on a song this moment when i start dancing or when i just smile um i usually never finish a song so then i i, I realize okay it's maybe it's not the right it's not the right thing and the song ends up as a as a demo or go to the basket um so, but but once I had this uh, this moment, I think okay, I'm on the right way. It's the right direction, and I need to finish this song. And I, like I said, I I don't care about genres or if it's is it disco house. If it, I don't know what it is. So it's 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 hard. I, as so many people ask me, well, well, how I would describe my music. So I have no idea. So. Um, and I don't want that people compare my music with music from others. So I I try I I try to uh, to be unique and 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 to make my sound. And the the best uh, compliment I I I can get is that people uh, when people say okay after fifteen seconds I I I know this is a purple disco machine song. So this this makes me happy because this shows me okay. I have an ID. My sound is having a, an, an ID. So that's 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 all. But I never focus it on my production. Okay. Over to the next question. How do you begin a track, bass or drums? So yeah, like I mentioned, I start with the drums and then with the bass. And once I have the perfect uh, 16 bar loop of drums and bass lines, I start jamming on my on my synthesizers or um um yeah start working on the song start arranging start uh yeah playing keys and and or listening to to samples that's uh that's what i do but everything starts with the drums and the bass so what plugins do you use on your drum bus um yeah as you can see actually nothing so sometimes i i just add um of course the eq that the the high cuts and maybe but just for for the effects i i usually don't compress i don't uh create a a, a group or channel and then i don't compress my drums because that's a uh, part from for the mixing uh, I, if I if I send this project to my mixing engineer, I try to send this as as dry as possible. Of course, with the with the delay and the reverb, I really like. But I usually don't compress anything because he can do it anyway. And and sometimes if it's too compressed, he's he's not flexible enough to to adjust things or to to change the sound. So that's why I usually never compress my drum section. Um, from the uh, CLA, what I mostly or sometimes use is this drums plugin. I use for for reverbs or maybe as a gate for for snares or the clap. Um, if I want to have, or what I what I sometimes do if I uh, I add a reverb on a clap, and then I just gate it. And then you have this kind of, I think it's called the, uh, the Phil Collins effect. And this makes the, the snare really 
big and 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 huge and 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 um yeah sometimes it fits to the song sometimes the snare needs a bit of, a bit smaller a bit more in the background not too not too aggressive so that's the only thing i i usually add on the drums uh, section okay what are your favorite free plugins are there any paid plugins you would highly recommend um free plugins i don't know um i mean that of course there are free plugins but i have so many plugins here so i mostly work with a with a um fab filter for all every filters and everything it's a fab filter i work with a waves plugin bundle i think 80 percent of my plugins i use in my songs are from from the waves bundle especially the the chris lord um package is, is so amazing and what else um another one i really like is the is the wow oh no i have it i don't have it here um yeah what else i can say the fab filter do you have a wow yeah this one is is really cool it makes like a it's it's actually a filter but with more dynamic and and you are more flexible to to work on this. Let me just add this to the for example on the drum loop. So let's add the wow, and then you have presets already. really high resonances and sweepy sounds so this is a plugin i i use a lot which makes a lot of fun to to, to play with and sometimes you can get lost in this really wonky sound but um it's 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 quite useful um okay how do you begin a remix drums okay i mean yeah it's actually the same so um the approach is is a bit different because you have the key elements already there when i start working on a on a yeah original song um usually i start from the scratch unless I use a sample and there's a sample already but mostly I start from the scratch so it's a it's a totally different approach um, when I start working on a remix but um, I like to create um, 8 to 16 bar grooves and if if I have a remix and and there's the bass line and the vocals or the the main chords are there um, of course I loop this and then again I, I, I start working with the drums and the bass line to to get it eight or 16 bar loop um to, to get an idea of um the groove and 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 the vibe um or usually when when i when i listen to the original song before i i agree to do the remix or not i have the remix id in mind and then it takes two three days that it works uh, in my mind and then when i start uh, producing i I definitely know what I'm gonna do, so I know how my remix should sound like. It's just a thing. I, 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 that's why I need to be quick to to um, to transport the ideas in into the DAWs. That's uh, that's that's the thing. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I I like both. I like remixing songs and I like working on 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 own songs. I could never decide for one. I could never say, okay, now I just produce own songs i need i need remixing um other songs okay two more questions um when you have an id for a track in your head where do you start so yeah it's it's actually the same what i what i said um before um everything starts in my head and um it can be also quite annoying for my family because this is the moment when I'm when my body is there at home, but 
here I'm start thinking about my songs and I'm not really there and I it, it it's I mean because we we are not multitasking um so it's 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 hard to follow uh yeah the the conversations with my friends or my wife so uh when I have this moment I, and I can't um I can't avoid so if if it starts working in my in my head I need to go to the studio and 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 work on the song. Otherwise, it will never. Otherwise, it will never stop, and I, I just go crazy, and um, and I can't stop it. So I can't say, okay, tomorrow 8 a.m. I'm I'm back in the studio. Then I will start thinking about the song. It it goes on, even overnight. Uh, I wake up at night and then I start thinking again about the song and the remix. So that's why, um, once I decided to do remix and I got the stems. I need to start right now. I, I, I could never say, okay, uh, I start in two weeks. So I would think all the time about, and it would drive me crazy. So I have to start and um, yeah. So last question, what mixer do you use? Um, here, um, to, uh, yeah, this is the mixer. It's an Allen and Heath CEO mixer here. Are all my analog synths plugged so i can actually use all my analog synths they are all plugged to this mixer and this mixer is plugged to the dav so i can usually um go and and, and use every single um synth and all the synths are also midi plugged if i just want to use the sound of a of um yeah of an um of a synth and so that's that's another reason um or for me it's 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 also important because um like i like i mentioned a couple of times i need to be quick and that's why everything is plugged and here i use the um the mackie pro mixer with mojo fader which is for me the perfect tool for for um for steinberg cubase and yeah that's it but i mean you do you actually don't need so many hardware to to make a good sound i i know so many people uh who um have working on a on a macbook and headphones and that's it no hardware nothing um so and, and, they, and they make amazing music so it's it's just uh how creative you are and and what what is in your head in your mind so um um yeah you, you you can also get lost if you have so many so many synths so many um vst plugins or fx plugins you, you can get lost and you can waste so much time finding the right sound sometimes it's better to focus on a few on a few synths and so okay i have those 10 presets or this 10 presets and i have to make a song with this 10 presets and maybe the result might be even better because um, you just focused on, on, on these 10 and then you find the best out of this 10 instead of find the best out of 5,000 different presets from 15 different uh, analog synths. Um, yeah, so that's what, another thing, uh, another advice I can give to everyone who starts making music, don't install a whole bunch of VST plugins. Start with one or two, then um, play around with this. And if you if you think okay, now I spend a lot of time on those, and I think I know how they work, install the next one. But don't go crazy and install fifteen different VST plugins and and two hundred different FX. You will never use them. Be it it just it just wastes your time. Um, yeah. Okay, guys um that's it thanks for joining thanks for having me defected thanks for um uh, thanks to to alex and jake for this amazing song thanks to simon uh for the opportunity to remix this song and um did i forgot someone no um everyone thanks to my fans for uh for your ongoing support and um hopefully uh we see us quite soon on the dance floors and i just can't wait to play in front of real people so i'm pretty sure uh we see us and um yeah take care cheers bye <laughs>